Hello, my name is Lydia Minot, Landscape Architect with Metro Vancouver Regional Parks. I am here with Robin Worcester, Natural Resource Management Specialist, as part of Phase 1 engagement for the proposed regional park at Cape Roger Curtis on Bowen Island. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that Bowen Island is within the territories of Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh nations, as well as the interest areas of a number of other nations. It is important to ground our work in this context because planning for this park or any other park in the region will have effects on these nations and their communities. That is why Metro Vancouver is ensuring that First Nations who wish to be involved have the opportunity for meaningful engagement during the planning process and that Musqueam, Squamish and tsleil perspectives, interests and values are reflected and respected in the approach. Metro Vancouver is a federation of 21 municipalities, one electoral area and one treaty First Nation that plan for and deliver regional scale services. Regional parks are one of these services and the role of regional parks is to protect natural areas and connect people to nature. The regional park system is a network of 23 regional parks, five regional greenways, two ecological conservancy areas, and two regional park reserves. In total, the regional park system protects over 13,800 hectares of land. Metro Vancouver has an agreement to purchase 97 hectares of land at the southwest tip of Bowen Island at Cape Roger Curtis. The land includes coastal bluffs, rocky headlands and Douglas fir forests. The park planning process includes background research, inventory and analysis. Each project phase will include engagement with First Nations, the public, stakeholders and government agencies. Developing a concept plan for the park will run concurrently with an application to Bowen Island Municipality to rezone the properties from rural residential to park, as well as an amendment to the official community plan. The application proposes a regional park complete with conservation areas, day and overnight uses. Metro Vancouver has submitted a rezoning and official community plan amendment application to the municipality. This short video provides some context of the site, its ecological values, existing conditions and potential as a regional park. This lighthouse on the western end of Bowen Island marks its rocky shores. But it also draws attention to some of British Columbia's rarest terrain. Bowen Island is at the entrance to Howe Sound, accessible by a short ferry. Within its 50 square kilometers is an area on the western end known as Cape Roger Curtis. Here lies an important parcel of land. It is 101 hectares or about 250 acres and contains iconic forest landscapes, moss-covered rocky outcrops and amazing views. The ecosystem here is known as coastal dry forest, which constitutes less than 1% of the land area within British Columbia. However, these types of ecosystems contain the highest number of endangered species in the province. You'll find trees like Douglas fir, shore pine and arbutus here on dry rocky cliffs and gentle slopes. And below, along the rocky coastline, intertidal habitat supports marine animals and coastal water birds. The site was originally intended for large site housing development, so includes clearings and access roads. 
These could be repurposed as trails to provide access to nature. Views here extend east toward Vancouver and west over the Salish Sea toward Vancouver Island. Hi, I'm Robin Worcester, Natural Resource Management Specialist. Ensuring regional ecosystems are protected, healthy, and resilient for the long term is central to the Metro Vancouver region retaining its unique sense of place. Metro Vancouver acquires land to grow the regional park system into a connected network of resilient regional parks and greenways that protect regionally important natural areas and connect people to them. The proposed park at Cape Roger Curtis would grow the regional park system by almost 97 hectares or 250 acres. It would protect dry coastal forest habitat, which is regionally rare and sensitive ecosystem. It's also on the western part of the region where we have few opportunities for regional park expansion. This area is also part of the new Atkatsum Howe Sound UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, which highlighted the importance of this area and the need to preserve representative landscapes. Being in the rain shadow of the Salish Sea, similar ecosystems to what exists at the proposed park area are only found on southern Vancouver Island and small parts of Metro Vancouver, such as Whitecliff Park. For nearly a hundred years, naturalists have recognized how special this site is and have been coming to the area to observe and document its unique natural values. The site has been studied for many decades and so there's great baseline information that has already been collected. Many of the most sensitive species and habitats at the site have been documented and mapped. Metro Vancouver has recently updated the terrestrial ecosystem mapping for the site and have found that nearly 93% of the site contains red and blue listed forests. The dry rocky outcrops and meadows contain locally rare flowers like toad flax and camas and are shaded by shore pine, arbutus and rare coastal juniper trees. The Douglas fir dominated forests contain western red cedar and hemlock in wetter areas and a number of old growth trees remain on site. On this corner of Bowen Island, the seabed drops steeply into the waters of the Georgia Strait. These rocky intertidal zones are influenced both by the House Sound Fjord environment as well as the Fraser River Plume. This area is known for its beds of eelgrass and blue mussels, which attract numerous seabirds, fish, and marine mammals. There are two ephemeral streams on the site and one ephemeral wetland, as well as many seepages and drainages pre present in the wetter months. A well-known BC botanist who surveyed the area called it one of the richest coastal sites in Metro Vancouver. The variety of habitats and plant communities here result in a diverse community of insects and wildlife. There are at least 141 bird species used in the area, one bald eagle nest at the site, there are amphibian breeding areas confirmed, and it provides excellent habitat for reptiles like garter snakes and alligator lizards. The site is also home to black-tailed deer, bats, otter, mink, and other mammals. There are 42 known and possible species at risk, including the Pacific great blue heron, northern red-legged frog, and macoon's meadow foam. Regional Parks has a natural resource management program which aims to ensure ecosystem health and involve the public in the stewardship of regional parks. We use an ecosystem-based approach which requires us to take a holistic view and ensures that land use decisions consider the dynamic nature of ecosystems. Through good park management, we aim to guide visitors through natural areas with minimal impact while educating, inspiring, and encouraging them to join us in stewardship. One of the principal ways we look to improve ecosystems that have become degraded in parks is through the power of community participation. Stewardship includes a wide range of actions by people working collaboratively with park staff to conserve, restore, and monitor ecosystems. And now Lydia will talk about the other potential ways to connect people with nature at the proposed park site. In spite of the significant ecological values of the area, the land was previously subdivided and prepared for residential development. It is now 24 individual lots, each with an undeveloped home site accessed by a driveway and equipped with servicing, including wells and electricity. Parts of the area have restrictive covenants to limit different development activities. A paved municipal road system and dedicated trails form existing connections, and a series of inactive logging roads are still evident and traverse the site. 
the unique combination of existing infrastructure and significant ecological values can be adapted for park use, providing an opportunity to establish a regional park. Park planning and design would focus on utilising existing disturbed or developed areas for park activities, a number of opportunities to support day use at the proposed park site include hiking, nature viewing, picnicking, as well as viewpoints and access to a key waterfront viewscape. Overnight programs and access provides opportunities for youth, families and community groups to experience nature close to home. The provision of overnight programs would provide visitors with opportunities for immersive nature experience, such as stargazing and nighttime nature viewing. Metro Vancouver already manages a range of overnight camping facilities, including group camps throughout the park system and camping programs at Derby Reach, Bray Island, Campbell Valley, Tynehead and Dees Island Regional Parks. Metro Vancouver is proposing the inclusion of supervised overnight tent camping at the proposed park. RV and trailer camping would not be permitted. Access to overnight areas would primarily be by park, shuttle, trail or greenway. A range of offerings are being considered including walk-in or bike-in sites, group campsites which typically accommodate school or youth groups, and some car access sites to allow for accessibility, as well as tent cabins. Overnight options would be phased in over time to enable piloting. Gear rental and targeted nature programs such as Learn to Camp will also be considered. And uses would be located in areas previously cleared for de development a smaller footprint within the broader park. At Bowen Island's southwest tip, the proposed park is approximately eight kilometres from Snug Cove. Existing transit connections to Horseshoe Bay provide an opportunity for people to experience a unique natural landscape without a private vehicle. Non-vehicular access to the park will be prior prioritised and access strategies will include a seasonal park shuttle, improved multi-use pathway or greenway connections, limited vehicular access to support accessibility and day use. Additionally, phased implementation of park facilities and transportation solutions will enable for adaptive management. Metro Vancouver will explore partnerships with Bowen Island Municipality, TransLink, stakeholders and service providers to advance sustainable park access. By considering environmentally sustainable transportation options to the park, barriers to accessing nature can be reduced and impacts on local traffic and greenhouse gas emissions limited. Regional parks are sustainably managed and well maintained for the safety of visitors and integrity of ecosystems. Metro Vancouver has a proven track record of over five decades of responsible land management, including park planning, natural resource management, park interpretation, community development and operations. Regional parks have protected and managed public land on Bowen Island at Crippen Regional Park for over 40 years. Regional park staff implement the system-wide regulation and compliance program, which is supported with visitor education. Overnight uses would include on-site supervision. At the proposed park site, open fires would be prohibited. Park staff are trained and equipped to monitor and respond to wildfire risk and are supported by Metro Vancouver's team of watershed firefighters who regularly work with the BC Wildfire Service across the province. Through thoughtful planning, design, operation and adaptive management, a diversity of opportunities to be active and enjoy time in nature can be provided at the proposed regional park. The opportunities include 
protection of 97 hectares of environmentally sensitive land in perpetuity, connectivity with adjacent conservation areas, it's part of How Sound Biosphere Reserve, new opportunities to connect with nature, including trails, nature interpretation, overnight access and public access to a key waterfront viewscape, potential park partnerships and potential cooperation with First Nations. Your input is important to us. Through this three-phase engagement process, there will be a number of opportunities to provide feedback as the project progresses. Input from Bowen Island residents will inform the Bowen Island Municipality rezoning and OCP amendment process. To be notified of project updates and engagement opportunities, please subscribe to the mailing list on the project website. Thank you for participating.